Hi, and welcome to the YWAM Kansas City podcast. My name is Leticia, and I have the awesome opportunity to be a part of the School of Biblical Studies. SBS is a nine-month program in, in YWAM where you get to go through every single book of the Bible inductively. It's pretty amazing. And in this episode, we're going to be sharing about how to find the goal of a biblical author, how to find the goal of a biblical author. Before we get to that, I want to just give you an update. It's been a while. If you've been tracking with us, we've been doing these episodes and just talking about uh, just the journey it's been going through these books of the Bible over the past. Now it's been about seven months. Um, And so far, just to catch you up, we've studied 52 books of the Bible which is crazy, 52 books of the Bible. And so that means we only got like 14 books left uh, before we're finished. So we were really coming close to the end here. It's really bittersweet. Um, So I've got all the emotions going on about coming to the end. But uh, it's really been amazing to be now in the New Testament. We entered the New Testament about a month ago. And... Honestly, my reaction after coming out of the prophets, just heavy in those prophetic books, you know, that prophetic language, you know, Phil, that heavy judgment language sometimes in the prophets. Yeah, you had been there a while too. (laughs) Yeah, we were like in that, like for a while. (laughs) For a couple months. Definitely. And even listening to that language, I remember just reading Jeremiah and Jeremiah's passion and he's hard and, and, and then reading even in uh, looking at Nehemiah and seeing his passion in the, uh, once it's in post the exile and just his grief over the people of Israel. And then I got to Matthew and I realized Jesus is a beast. Can I say that? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is a beast in you that. Said <laughs> I said it. I thought Nehemiah was like, man, his words are like tough on the judgment. But honestly, when we get to Matthew, Jesus says some pretty hard things, you know, like, man, I think he says harder things than anybody, to be honest. Um, You know, once you get to the New Testament, some of the things he has to say to the Pharisees and he says stuff that we love, but he also says stuff to the religious elite that is, you know, quite, you know, difficult things um, that really addresses the heart. And and so, yeah, I, I saw Jesus in even fiery new way (laughs) of just his heart for, for his people, but also his heart to confront, uh, confront wickedness as well. And, uh, but I'm loving the new Testament letters and just, it's been so nice to just be able to meditate, um, on these truths, just going over and over again, um, of this, the gift of salvation, what it means to be redeemed, Um, yeah, it's just been beautiful and exciting. And, uh, I think even refreshing as a school is we're like, man, thank God for salvation. (laughs) You know, you come out of the prophets and you come out of old Testament, you get into, to just Jesus and his life laid down for us and nothing but joy and, and Thanksgiving, you know, as, as we get to that part. And so it's been great. Jesus is great. Um, One of the aspects I would love to share with you today about um, how to find the goal of a biblical author. Um, This is something that as we are part of SBS, we get um, we get the opportunity to learn how to do. And one of the ways that we learn how to do this in the SBS method is we structure a book. In SBS, we like to call this a horizontal. So as we're going through a book, even before we get into how to interpret a passage, um, how to understand uh, even the background of everything that was going on at the time, we begin the process with simply looking at how is this book structured? How did the author put this book together, so to speak, so that we as the readers could best understand the point that the author is wanting to make. Now, you might be wondering like, why, why is that something we should care about? Why should we be concerned about finding the goal of a biblical author? Um, shouldn't we just dive right in and just, you know, read it however we want to read it? Um, 
Well, I would like to encourage you that we want to know the goal of a biblical author because in knowing that goal and coming to that understanding, we actually are reading that book of the Bible the way it was intended to be read. Um, there's a lot of ways we can read books of the Bible. There's a lot of ways we can approach the Bible. And, and I wouldn't say that there's like this absolute, you know, right way, but there are better ways to approach the Bible. And one of those is by knowing the structure and the author's intent for that book. Um, one of the reasons why this is important is because the Holy Spirit has inspired this author. You know, when I think about that, as I've been going through the Bible and thinking about the way the Holy Spirit inspired these authors and used them, you know, I'm, I'm challenged by that to go, I want to really respect that because that's the Holy Spirit's work. The Holy Spirit has given these authors the way in which he wants this message to be given. And I've been challenged as we've gone through these books of the Bible to go, man, I want to see that structure, but I also want to honor it because I know the Holy Spirit is behind it. You know, if we, if the Holy Spirit wasn't a part of it, then maybe it wouldn't matter as much. But for me, at least knowing that the Holy Spirit is behind it, that he's inspiring the way that the content has been given to us makes me go, I want to care all the more because the Holy Spirit is amazing and he's so creative and he has given these authors um, amazing ways in order to allow us to understand what God wants us to understand. So I think it's important to, to have in mind, what is the goal that this author has? What is the purpose and intent for this message, this book that the author has? Also think another one reason is because it just allows us to make sense of things in that book. In a prior episode, we talked about how we can just get lost in certain passages that are difficult. And one of the ways to come out of that, we said was to actually know the big picture. Well, structuring a book in SBS, when we're learning to do this, it gives us that big picture view and we're able to see, whoa, this is what's going on in this book. And in doing that, it just helps us make sense. We're, we're able to make sense when we get into the small little details, we're able to make more sense of it because we know the big picture of the book. Um, as I was thinking about this, just trying to think of an example of how knowing the purpose and the structure affects our understanding, um, something that came to mind for me was like a group text message thread that doesn't have the ability to reply direct. You ever been a part of those, Phil? <laughs> Uh, many times <laughs> it's a big mess it's a big mess right you know it's like you can't reply directly to maybe the first message and so everyone's replying and then a, a new subject comes in and and you're like okay like you have to almost go back and read everything to try to even make sense of what's going on sometimes you have to read it a couple times because your first reading through you actually missed like a message or the order or something because people are, yeah yeah, everybody's jumping in and it's like, what are, what, what is this, what, what is this conversation about? <laughs> about, you know? So we lose a sense of like, what is the meaning? Because we are all replying in different ways and there isn't kind of this logical flow of uh, intentional direct replies going on. So it kind of made me think about how things can be if we think of the Bible and the purpose of the structure really helps us make sense. You know, I, I've been really thinking about how God, nothing the Lord does is random. He's so intentional and he's purposeful in all that he does, even in our lives. Right. And so when he gives us his word, which is powerful and life and he's, you know, Jesus has the words of life. His, the word is living and active. He gives us this living and active word in an intentional way in a way that has structure, in a way that has a beauty to that structure that actually helps us understand what the author is wanting us to understand. So 
hopefully at this point you want to see some examples of this and you feel a little like, man, show me how to do it. How can I get to this? Well, I'm going to help you do that. We're going to look at two books of the Bible in the New Testament that I think it's just kind of fun to know the structure of because it, as we said, it shows us what the author's goal is in how he has structured that book. So first we're going to look at Ephesians, book of Ephesians. We just finished Ephesians a few weeks ago. So good. Um, loved it. And one of the unique things about Paul's letters in the New Testament is there is a specific structure to it. And the structure is one of um, that ancient letter writing. So there's a way at that time that um, people wrote letters. And we can look at Ephesians and we can see the actual design or the structure of a letter, that this was a real letter at that time. This is how people wrote letters. Um, so he's not doing something that's completely out of the ordinary of the time. He's actually structuring his content in this letter form that would have been familiar to people at that time. It's kind of like us, you know, I don't know how many people write letters. Do you write letters anymore? Phil? Um, like get out a pen and paper, right? Yeah. A pen and paper, pen pal, Ooh, write it, send time. it. <laughs> Back in the day when I was a kid, I did a bunch. Yeah, you know, like it, it used to be a big thing. Now we're all emailing or <laughs> or not even emailing. They call it snail mail. It's too slow. Messaging on everything else. We don't we don't really do the old fashioned. But the old fashioned is great. Um, and it's always nice to get a letter. I think it's always nice to get one, it's even true. though we don't give them out too much anymore. But it's always nice to get a letter. But there's a way that letter is written, right? We're used to that greeting and of a letter we're used to just kind of how the person will share with us. It's there's a way we understand that in our time. It's just immediately we, we look at it and we know what the structure of that letter is. Well, it's the same way during Paul's day. And I'll show you kind of what that structure was and then kind of how it is in Ephesians. So in Paul's time, letters would begin with a greeting. So it would also begin with, who the writer was, you know? So sometimes with us, we'll say like, you know, dear Letitia. But at that time, they would write beginning with who was writing. So Paul would say, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, beginning with him to the church at Ephesus, right? So it would begin with this greeting of who's the, the one writing, who are they writing to? And then there would be a blessing grace and peace to you, right? And from that blessing, there would go into a, what would be called a thanksgiving. So sometimes the blessing and the thanksgiving could be together and the thanksgiving could look like thanking the recipient for particular aspects about the recipient. But Paul often has a thanksgiving, not just about the recipient, but thanksgiving to God. He can go into a time in which he's just thanking God um, and giving almost just this point of just a worship in, in a passage. Then you have what would be like the body of the letter where it just gets into the main topics and focuses that the author wanted to, to present. And then there's the closing. And often in the closing, there's like final greetings, uh, Paul would say, make sure this letter is read to so-and-so's house, you know, greet this person on my behalf, you know, all these kinds of greetings, final greetings. And then it would end with just a, almost a benediction and closing that would say something like, maybe even repeating what it said in the beginning, grace and peace to you, um, which is what Paul would do often. And so... This structure, just knowing it, I want to point out one point or, or show one point in this structure that I thought was exciting and helped me see even the author's intent, the author's point. At the beginning of Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 3 through 14, we get this section in which Paul is talking about all of these amazing truths in Christ that we have in him, 
these spiritual blessings. We have every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places is what he's going into. And he begins to just list all of these spiritual blessings that we have. And what I thought was exciting about this is that the whole of this section is a part of the Thanksgiving section. So Paul, in writing this to the Ephesian church, he's expressing his thanksgiving to God to what for what we have in him. Not necessarily getting theological at this point. It's not instructional. It's worshipful. It's to invite the recipient, the reader, into a place of worship, which I really believe if we read it this way, that's the response, right? We want to read we hear those words, verse four, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. Man, like reading that should draw us in with Paul into a place of worship. Thank you, Jesus, that this is what you have done for me, right? So this is the intent that he has to share this Thanksgiving with them and to draw them into thanksgiving together with him in praising God for who he is. I wanna show you one more example of this that I think is exciting to see and really impacted how I um, understood this gospel. That is the gospel of Matthew. Once I understood the purpose of the structure and how the author had put it together. Something unique about the Gospel of Matthew is, it's really teaching heavy, right? As, as far as the Gospels go. Matthew is like the one that's the heaviest as far as long speech sections that Jesus is teaching uh, crowds. And there's a little verse that is repeated several times in the Gospel of Matthew. And it's there actually intentionally by the author, Matthew, so that we know his goal in what he is doing in this book. And that is the phrase, when Jesus had finished these sayings or these words. Every time you find that, I want to encourage you to go look for that. Look for that phrase, when Jesus had finished these sayings, or it might say these words, these instructions. That appears in Matthew five times and it allows for there to be these almost block end sections five sections that structure the whole gospel of Matthew you might think well what is the point of that well what scholars have said and uh, what has been presented suggested about that is that Matthew who is speaking to a predominantly Jewish audience we're showing them who Jesus is and why Jesus is fulfilling everything. All the Old Testament prophecies, everything is fulfilled in Christ. What he's doing is showing them there is a new and greater Moses. Five books of the law, right? There's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, right? And they would have known about the Torah, these five books. And Matthew presents his gospel where it has these five sections in which Jesus is teaching, beginning with the Sermon on the Mount. And it gives that Jewish reader who would have seen this, wow, Jesus, he is the one who is greater than Moses. What he has to say, what he's bringing is of greater, his law, meaning his words, are a greater weight in what God is saying to us. Um, and that would have drawn that, that Jewish believer into understanding who Christ is. So those are just two examples in Ephesians and Matthew that I hope helps you see what is the value of knowing the goal of a biblical author by looking at the structure. And I want to encourage you to pick up a book of the Bible. doesn't matter which one it is. I would say a New Testament letter. Start with like, yeah, go to Ephesians like we just did and see if you can write down what section this, like what part of the letter, right? Is this, is this the greeting section? Is it Thanksgiving? Is this the body of the letter? Um, is this the conclusion or the closing, the final greeting? 
go through it yourself and see if you can like actually uh, put it into each one of those uh, sections and then just kind of step back and meditate or reflect on how does that affect now how you think about that book and what the author is wanting you to understand. Well, I hope this was encouraging for you. It really is exciting for me. And uh, yeah, I hope you get to have time to go through it. If you've enjoyed this episode, we just want you to, um, yeah, like, subscribe, even leave a comment if it's been really enjoyable for you and just impactful for you. And we'd love to see you again on the next episode. 